happy Easter. I'm so excited about today. Why? Because it is the anniversary of the resurrection of Jesus. And that is so, so very important. Um, today we are going to do our lesson from the Tykes Room. Um, if you are in preschool through kindergarten, this is your classroom. Um, as you can see, it's very empty right now, but hopefully soon we will all be back in here together. Um, you guys, your teachers, Miss Melissa, shout out, hey, Miss Melissa, Miss Sarah, and Rainy and Haley. Um, I know they are wanting to see you guys back again very, very Packet, soon. you should have one of these. We have one of those for everybody. In this packet, you can follow along with the story we're going to do today. One way that we celebrate Easter is with eggs, Easter eggs. And so we are going to kind of do a different little spin with the Easter eggs, and we are going to tell the story of Easter. In Jesus' day, most people walked everywhere. Sometimes kings rode on donkeys or horses when they entered a city. The people would stop what they were doing and watch as the king rode by. On the day that Jesus rode into their city, the people were thrilled to see him. They believed that he was their new king who had come to save them and to fill their lives with joy. The people showed their happiness by spreading tree branches and coats on the road. This was also their way of honor, showing honor to Jesus, much like we might use a red carpet today. So for this section of the story, we're going to use egg number one, the blue egg. And we'll use this sheet and this one. So in our blue egg, in our little basket of eggs that we have here, the blue egg, what do you guys think is inside the blue egg? I'm sure most of you guessed it. A little donkey. So for the next egg is gonna be the light pink egg. So we'll use this sheet and this sheet. And the light pink egg, what do you guys think is in it? We have some coins. What coins have to do with it. Not everyone was happy to have Jesus as his king. Some people only pretended to be happy, but on the inside, they really didn't want anything to do with him. One of those pretenders was a man named Judas. Some of other men hated Jesus so much that they wanted to kill him, but they needed help from someone who could get close to Jesus. Because Jesus was a pretender, and he became and he was greedy for money. He told these men that he would help them capture Jesus if they would pay him 30 silver egg coins. Egg number three is a light purple egg. Let's check out what's inside it. Inside there, we have a little cup. Jesus had a special dinner with his disciples, 12 of his closest friends who traveled with him and learned from him. During the meal, Jesus stood up and held out a cup and gave everyone a drink. Then he said something that was hard for them to understand. He said that the wine in the cup was his blood. He didn't mean that they would actually be drinking blood, but that the wine was a symbol or a picture of his blood. He wanted them to remember this special night and the covenant or promise he was making them and to all people. Do you know what that pro promise is? You'll find out if you keep Next listening. is the orange egg. And inside the orange egg, we have praying hands. After dinner with his disciples, Jesus took them to a garden. He asked them to pray while he went to another place in the garden to talk to God alone. He began to be sad and to dread what he knew was going to happen soon. He was going to die. He was willing to die, for he once said, no one takes my life from me, but I lay it down of my own accord in John 10, 18. You see, one of the remarkable things about Jesus was that like no one before or since, he both was God and man at the same time. The God part of him was willing to die because of his great love, but the human part of him did not want to experience the great pain that he would surely suffer by dying on a cross. When you are afraid or sad, you should do just as Jesus did. Pray. Next, we have the green egg. And inside the green egg, we have a whip. When Jesus finished praying in the garden, the men who wanted to kill him took him as their prisoner. Then they brought Jesus to Pilate, their ruler, and he had Jesus whipped. 
The whip used was long and hard, and it hurt Jesus so bad that he bled. Jesus hadn't done anything wrong. The men who wanted to kill him were afraid of losing power, so they wanted Jesus out of their way. They knew that if, they, if people really believed that Jesus was the Son of God, which he was, they would follow him. Can you guess by our worksheet what's in the yellow See. egg? The yellow egg holds a rooster. Are you wondering what a rooster has to do with the Easter story? For Peter, one of the disciples of Jesus, the sound of a rooster crowing triggered great sadness and caused him to cry. Here's what happened. Peter was one of Jesus' closest friends, and he once promised Jesus that no matter how dangerous things might become, he would always be loyal. Jesus could depend on him. But that began to change when Peter realized that those who planned to kill Jesus might want to kill him too. In fact, Peter was so afraid that he denied even knowing Jesus. Just the evening before, when Peter had promised to be loyal, Jesus told him that he would indeed deny knowing him, not just once or even twice, but three times. And in fact, it happened just as Jesus said it would. The rooster was still crowing when Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times, in Mark 14.30. Peter was so ashamed that he ran away. In our light orange egg, we will find a crown. Which one of these crowns do you think we'll find? Which one would you prefer to wear? I'm betting Silas would like that one. This has Vincent written all over it. My bet Sayla would like that one. Which one would you guys like? So let's find out which one of the crowns that Jesus had. Ugh. A crown of thorns? After Jesus had been whipped, the soldiers took branches with thorns, twisted them around in the shape of a crown, and shoved it down on Jesus' head. And again, Jesus bled. We know that because Jesus was the Son of God. He could have stopped the men from hurting him, but he let them continue. Do you know why? Because even, even though he hadn't done anything wrong, he had not sinned, Jesus was taking the punishment for all the wrong things that any person had ever done or ever would do. This includes you and me. What do you guys think is in this egg? Let's find out. It's a cross. So it's not just any cross. It's a cross made with nails. Wonder why it's made of nails. The soldiers took Jesus up to the top of the hill outside the city, then using nails much larger than the ones in our egg. They nailed him to the rough wooden cross. He died a few hours later. The Bible tells us that Jesus was stronger than any man. The soldiers couldn't have killed Jesus if he had not let them. He could have fought off the soldiers, but why didn't he? He didn't because God loves people so much he was willing to let Jesus be punished for our sins. The things we do or the ways we act that don't please God. And even though it hurt Jesus badly, he was willing to do what God the Father asked. Jesus loves us too. In our purple egg, we find a spear. Two robbers were crucified with Jesus, one on each side of him. When the soldiers came to check the three men on the crosses, Jesus had already died. Just to make sure, though, one of the soldiers stabbed Jesus in the side with a spear. It is sad to think that Jesus died and that he died in such a cruel way. But remember, Jesus gave up his life because of his love for all sinners. This includes you and me and all who tell lies, steal from each other, disobey God in any way, or even someone like the soldier who stabbed him. After Jesus died, a man named Joseph asked if he could bury him. This was a brave and loving thing for Joseph to do. Remember that men who killed Jesus didn't believe that he was the son of God, but Joseph did believe, and he wanted Jesus to have a proper burial. Joseph knew that this might get him in trouble with the soldiers, but he was brave and asked for permission anyway. In our blue egg, we find a linen cloth. Much like Joseph wrapped the body of Jesus in a cloth much like this. He buried him in a tomb cut out 
of stone like a shallow cave. Joseph then went away sad because Jesus was dead, and he wondered what would happen in this dark pink egg. I bet we're going to find a clue to what happened next. It's a stone. The stone that was rolled in front of Jesus' tomb was much bigger than the stone in the egg. It was as big as a door and probably weighed more than a car. After Jesus was buried, special soldiers were assigned to stand guard at the tomb, but these men were no match for God's angel. It took just one angel to roll the stone away. The guards were afraid, so afraid that they fainted. Where did the angel get his strength? He got it from God, of course, to Sunday morning and our very last egg. Inside this egg is the next clue to the story. Wait a minute. It's empty. When two women came to the tomb of Jesus, they were surprised, too. The heavy stone was rolled aside, and the tomb was empty. Jesus' body was not there. The angel told him he has risen. Jesus had come back to life. This was the promise that Jesus made to his disciples at their special dinner just a few days before that. He would die, to, but come back to life to show those who believed in him that they would live forever, too. Someday, because he died for us, we can meet him and thank him in heaven. And that's the story of Easter. So there we go. That's the story of Easter. We're almost out of time, so um, I just wanted to let you guys know in the packet that you got, there is several different things. If you're a third grader, third, fourth, or fifth grader, there's the next lesson in the lockdown faith. If um, everybody got one of the resurrection egg story, there's also a little packet of jelly marbles, and they look kind of like BBs. And hopefully by the time that you watch this, you had a chance to let them sit in water overnight. If you haven't, I would recommend you try that because they are super fun. So let's see what they do. So after you've let them sit in water overnight, you should have your jelly marbles. And in this demonstration, the jelly marble is representing Jesus. He had no sin, he was clear, he was pure, um, but he was crucified and persecuted um, because of the that he, he was uh, speaking against what the Pharisees were wanting people to believe. Um, he, was, he was telling the good news of, of God. And so for this demonstration, they, after he had died, they put him in a tomb. And as with the customs, I'm putting several in there just so you guys can, can see. As with the custom of the days, they prepared him with spices and, and, and wrapping him and how all they did all the preparations. But after being in the tomb for several days, when they opened it, he wasn't there. So you guys try this with yours. You can also try and um, before you uh, hydrate your jelly marbles, you can put coloring in your water and it will make your, um, your jelly marbles whatever color you want. Um, so that, that's, you can get them out, play with them. Make sure your hands are clean or they'll absorb whatever, whatever nastiness you have on your hands. But have fun with them. We love you, miss you, bye.